So welcome, Mark. Um, for our final talk uh, during this session, I'm going to be speaking with um, Mark van der Brink uh, about his book, The Minox Files, uh, published by Van Zertendal. Um, so before we, we dive into the subject of the book, um, just a few words about, about Mark himself. Um, is a photographer. Mark is a photographer from uh, from the Netherlands, who studied at the Rietveld Academy, um, and shortly, I mean, even I believe, back as a student, began using this very particular camera, which developed into um, a project spanning many decades, and that has over time constituted a huge archive of of images. Um, so, I mean, in a sense, my first question is, you know, very obvious. The book is called The Minox Files. What is a, a Minox camera? Hello. Hello. So, a Minox camera is a, a, a small spy camera, you could say. It's sort of, I'm not sure if they invented it as, as it should be a spy camera, but it's also maybe a sort of gadget. Um, I've got one with me, by the way. So this is, the so this is, this is what the Minox looks yeah. like. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's really handy. It's really uh, yeah, sensitive to, to take pictures with. Um, it's yeah, easy to handle. You just Actually, there are quite a few options on there. It's been, it's also, you can use it really as a good camera. I mean, it, it is a good camera. So, uh, but the negatives are so small, it's like uh, 8 by 11 millimeters. So it's like this. And um, yeah, it gives a beautiful result, I think. And so, I mean, when I, um, when I, when I was reading up on your biography and I, I read that you had first presented a project using a Minox camera when you were at the Rietveld Academy, I just, I wondered to myself, if you were a student in, a, in such a prestigious art school and you did a project with this camera, what would people's reaction be? Did, um, like, what was it that, that drew you to this, this device in the first place when you, when you were uh, first experimenting with it? Well, actually, I, 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 I never, uh, thought about a project using this camera. It, it's more started like a sort of notebook or diary. So it was a sort of project on the side. Um, and yeah, as it grew on, I mean, I, f it, I fell in love with the images. And But also uh, t during my um, graduation, I had uh, other series hanging on the wall. And this is sort of was on the side. It, 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 it was that uh, Willem van Soetendal said, hey, uh, Mark, you have those small Minox prints, you know. Uh, show them, they are beautiful. And at my graduation, in the end, they look like even better than the sort of official stuff I had hanging. So yeah, that was the sort of the start of it. Yeah. And, and since then, so in, in the mid-80s, you have continued to use this camera regularly. Yeah. And my understanding is that you've built up an archive of some maybe more than 15,000 yes. images. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my understanding is also that this is the first time that you've made a book from, from yes. this, this yeah. archive. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many pictures in the book, but starting from 15,000 images must be a huge sort of challenge. So yeah. how did you start this process of, of using that huge archive and turning it into the, this book that we have here? Yeah. Well, uh, when Willem van Soetenau asked me to, to make a book, uh, it was his idea to not only look at the images I selected, but uh, look at all the all the stuff is all everything I made so we went back to the contact sheets and yeah made that sort of journey again I mean through the all the films through all 
and we discovered also quite a few images which I never printed or overlooked. And that is also because you look at an older archive, you look with yeah, sort of different eyes to it. And um, so our first selection or our first edit was like, uh, I think 600 images. I had this fantasy to make a book with like, let's say thousand images. But okay, that's too much. I mean, you, you, you get bored. Um, so we had to reduce it, reduce it, reduce it. And I think, yeah, Willem did such a great job doing that. And I think it's really important to trust your uh, editor <coughs> to make a selection and go through all your work instead of you are do doing a sort of pre-selection. Um, and that is the way he works also. I mean, as a photographer, you are so sort of too close to your images. So if you can let that go, and let your designer do the editing, I think you get the best results. If he speaks the same language as you, of course. I mean, that, that I think that's an yeah, important thing in the trust. So. But you mentioned, um, it sounds like you have known each other since you were a student. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, he, was you, he teaching yeah. at that time? Yeah, or? yeah. So that was, of course, we know we a lot of really a, a lot of time and um, yeah, actually during the uh, corona period I um, I started thinking hey maybe I should throw some stuff on uh, on Instagram and that was the moment he picked it up and I saw, he saw this you know he did know it work but he saw it again and he thought wow this is so good we're gonna make a book of it so it's great yeah yeah, sure, sure. Well, uh, it's yeah. Um, I mean, the other question I wanted to ask you is: um, looking at these images, there's all different kinds of images in in this book and in the archive. Yeah. There are images that um, that feel personal. There are images yeah. that that feel sort of very ethereal maybe not almost real, there are very mundane images, mm -hmm. and um, the book doesn't have a narrative. This, this doesn't seem to be at least, um, you know, trying to tell a very specific story. Right. But right. I'm curious to know, you had this huge group of images and also many different types of image. Right. How you, was there some kind of criteria or, or, or idea that you had in mind for what you wanted to bring together in, in the book? Um, yeah, I don't know really. I mean, it's sort of... A more I know that it feels like it's sort of going everywhere. But still there is this sort of line and it's true through all my work there. So, um, and, um, you know, it started really as a diary. So I had this camera with me uh, with me all the time but later I tried to ha had a little bit more focus you know doing projects so I went to the Alps for example uh, went to Paris a few times for projects uh, New York so there is a sort of structure in there you know it's the, the chapters are divided in the Alps uh, Paris New York etc um, but yeah I don't know the line through the pictures a journalist wrote you know it's something to do with uh, intimacy and distance you know the the, li the the line between those poles and I think that is the sort of line in my work you could say and it feels uh, really random but yeah still f yeah yeah I think that's true it does have th <coughs> there is a feeling of randomness but there's also a feeling of coherence at the same time, which yeah. I, I find really interesting, is that yeah. you're not quite sure what brings all of these images together, but mm. somehow they all do seem to belong to, to something coherent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess another, another um, question that I, that I have about this is in terms of your process of taking the pictures. Mm. I mean, this is obviously... I read somewhere that you called the Minox a smartphone avant la lettre. Yeah. So, you know... 
you actually have found a camera that's smaller than a smartphone, which is yeah. which is quite impressive. But do you is this something that you're just you have on you at all times and you you, I, just, I, you take pictures whenever they come to you, or is it a yeah. more kind of specific process in terms of taking the no, pictures? No, it's a, it's the first thing you said. I mean, I that, uh, at least so I started. You know, as you have your phone today, I started out with having the small camera in my pocket all the time. And each time I saw something happening, I thought, hey, that's nice for a picture. And it also, maybe it's also to do with the sort of, how do you call it now, FOMO? F FOMO feeling, so fear, fear of, of missing, missing out. out. Yeah. So I carried, before the Minox, I carried a little, sm a big camera. Uh, but yeah, you, it's way too much to carry that around all the time. So. I found this small camera. I saw it on a film uh, from Robert Altman, uh, Pre, Pre à la Porte. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I thought, whoa, that is a cool camera, so small. Um, and then uh, I saw it, I, I found it on eBay, or no, I saw it in, an, uh, in a store and later on I uh, found it also on eBay. So yeah, it's perfect. For me, it's perfect. I, I don't carry it around anymore, not not that much, only okay. for yeah, sort of special occasions. Yeah. And um, you you mentioned something a journalist wrote at some point. I read I read something else that was written about an exhibition of yours uh, in a Dutch Dutch newspaper NRC, yeah. um, that re in which they referred to you as a warm voyeur. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I wondered just how you, how what you, what you thought of that characterization, and also, you know, obviously, as a spy camera, mm -hmm. um, at least a so-called spy camera, there obviously is a natural overtone of voyeurism in, uh, you know, taking images unnoticed. Yeah. Is yeah. there? Do you feel like there's a voyeuristic quality in what you're doing in the in these pictures that you're taking? Yeah, I think so, sort of. But it's, I think it's also called, is this, what I said, you know, it's like intimacy and, and distance. So the, 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 the feeling between it. And of course, if you have a small camera, you, you're not so not noticeable by, uh, by your surroundings. So that makes it different for the pictures you make. Um, but yeah, on the other hand, you know, people ask me a lot about this Minox camera. Oh, you're a sort of spy. And, and that doesn't really fit me. I mean, I, I didn't never use it as a spy to, to, to do sort of sneaky uh, picture. Um, it wasn't also for me a sort of point and shoot camera. I, I, I really looked at what I would do with it. So there's, yeah, there is a sort of composition, a sort of feeling in there with, I, with an intention. So no, yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> um, Okay, we are. Uh, we have uh, just only a few minutes left, so I wanted to see if there are any questions in the audience for Mark. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Otherwise, I have more questions. So, I guess the other the other question that I had for you was just, um, you know, this is. Is this right? This is your your first book that you're yeah. that you've done. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I'm wondering, are you making all kinds of other pictures as well, using different kinds of cameras, or has this really been a kind of central part of the the work that you've made over the years? Well, it it is, it is a central part of my work, but it is also a sort of inspiration. So from from the archive, I you know look at images which are fascinating me and starting a new project based on that stuff um, and for now I'm working on a new book um, and you know this archive uh, uh, is to 2004 and that's the moment my son uh, was born and I couldn't travel so much so I decided to okay let's go and do stuff in the studio and I started out with this camera in the studio which is a little bit strange to do in a studio, but okay. And from there on, you know, I worked first with this camera and worked with other cameras towards, uh, yeah, what I'm doing now. So, so 
these were kind of sketches in a way yeah. also for yeah. for other work yeah. that, that a, a followed. Notebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's that's all we have time for. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Mark. Yes. Thank um, you too. And for guiding uh, me too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, Willem van Zotterdal doesn't have a booth um, on the, uh, at Paris Photo, but you will be able to see um, some prints of yes. uh, some of Mark's images on um, the stand of Gallery 51 from Antwerp. I, uh, that is B32. And Mark is also going to be signing copies of the book yeah. on Saturday at 4.30 um, on the Gallery 51 booth. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.